700 million years ago, Earth wasn't just cold, it was entombed in ice from pole to pole, with glaciers scraping across the equator and the entire planet locked at minus 50 degrees Celsius. The title says it all. This is when Earth was a frozen snowball. According to conventional wisdom, such a freeze should have wiped out almost all life. But here's the twist. Buried beneath kilometers of ice and in the darkest depths, microbes clung to existence in searing hot springs and salty brine pockets. So how did a world on the brink of sterilization become the birthplace of biology's greatest explosion? The answer rewrites not just Earth's history, but our understanding of survival itself. Glacial boulders perched in ancient limestone right where the equator once was. This is the clue that cracked open the snowball Earth mystery. Paul Hoffman, a geologist with a stubborn streak, stands under the Namibian sun, staring at rocks that shouldn't exist. These are drop stones, chunks of glacier-borne debris embedded in layers that paleomagnetic data pin to tropical latitudes. It's not just weird, it's world-changing. If glaciers reach the equator, that means every continent, every ocean, every inch of the planet was under siege from ice. Hoffman's field notes read like dispatches from a different planet. The Atavi group in Namibia, stifling heat, malaria, days spent hammering at outcrops while skeptics back home called the whole idea fantasy. But the evidence kept piling up. Diamictite beds, jumbled unsorted rock left behind by ancient glaciers, sit directly on top of what used to be warm, shallow seas. Then, scattered through fine silt, those unmistakable drop stones. The only way to explain them? Icebergs drifting across tropical waters, dropping pebbles as they melted. No other process fits. It wasn't just Namibia. Core samples from Australia, China and Canada tell the same story. Paleomagnetic signatures confirm these glacial rocks formed within 30 degrees of the paleo equator. Three separate times in Earth's deep past, the planet froze solid. The Sturtian glaciation around 710 million years ago. The Marinoan, ending about 635 million years ago. Even earlier, the Maganyeni event, two billion years back. Each episode lasted millions of years. Average temperatures plummeted to minus 50 degrees Celsius. Ice sheets kilometers thick bulldozed everything and locked the oceans beneath a shell of frozen water. This wasn't a typical ice age. It was a planetary death sentence, the kind of freeze that should have erased almost all life. Yet the rock record is clear. The planet's surface became a mirror, reflecting sunlight back into space, making escape nearly impossible. For a while, Earth teetered on the edge of absolute silence. The question isn't just how life survived, it's how anything could survive at all. Life didn't vanish under the ice, instead it found shelter in places most of us would never think to look. Deep below the frozen oceans, hydrothermal vents kept pumping out heat and minerals. Even with the sun blocked by kilometers of ice, these underwater hot springs created pockets of warmth and chemical energy, enough for entire ecosystems to survive. Modern vent communities discovered in the late 20th century thrive without a hint of sunlight, living off hydrogen sulfide and methane. Scientists now see these as living blueprints for ancient survival. Above, in the thick ice itself, something even stranger happened dust and tiny bits of rock landed on the surface and melted their way down, forming cryokonite holes, small dark pockets filled with liquid water. Microbes took advantage, clustering into mats and feeding on whatever nutrients trickled in. Each hole was its own little world, isolated from the deadly cold above and the crushing pressure below. Even today, cryokonite communities on Antarctica's glaciers show how tough life can be when conditions are at their worst. Beneath the glaciers, liquid water sometimes pooled in the hidden brine pockets. Salt lowered the freezing point, creating slushy microhabitats where bacteria and archaea could hang on. Modern analogues in Lake Vostok and Blood Falls, deep under Antarctic ice, prove that microbes don't need sunlight or warmth just a little liquid water and the right chemistry. 
these brine veins, barely a few centimetres wide, may have acted as bunkers for life during the snowball Earth freeze. Everywhere scientists look, whether it's boiling vents, icy holes or salty cracks, they find modern extremophiles that mirror what ancient life must have done. Survive without the sun. Eat whatever is available. Wait out the apocalypse. The evidence points to a planet where life didn't just endure, it adapted, diversified and held on tight, even as the world above was locked in silence. These hidden sanctuaries set the stage for everything that came after, proving that even in the coldest, darkest times, life finds a way. Volcanoes never got the memo that Earth was frozen. For millions of years, they kept belching out carbon dioxide, each eruption adding a little more to the air above the ice. With the planet locked in deep freeze, nothing scrubbed that CO2 away. No rain, no rivers, no weathering of rocks. So the gas just built up and built up year after year until the atmosphere was packed with more than 100,000 parts per million. That's at least 250 times today's level. The numbers sound unreal, but that's what the models say it takes to break a snowball. Over 0.12 bar of CO2, thick enough to trap every scrap of heat. Then, at last, the tipping point. As greenhouse gases soared, the planet's deep chill couldn't hold. Temperatures shot up, first slowly, then in a rush. The ice began to melt, not over millions of years, but in less than 10,000. That's the blink of an eye in geologic time. Oceans rose, glaciers collapsed, and a world of white flipped to blue and green almost overnight. The rocks remember this chaos. Directly above the old glacial deposits, thick layers of carbonate minerals, cap carbonate, spread out like a frosting, laid down as the supercharged greenhouse world triggered wild chemical reactions in the oceans. Isotope ratios in these layers swing sharply negative, a fingerprint of a planet in climate overdrive. Banded iron formations reappeared too, as oxygen flooded the seas and iron rained out, painting a clear before and after in stone. Suddenly, Earth was no longer an icebox. It was a hothouse, raw and ready for something new. The ice melts and suddenly the world is wide open. Bare rock, flooded shorelines, oceans rich with new chemicals. For the survivors, it's like waking up in a galaxy of empty apartments. Every niche is vacant, every ecosystem up for grabs. This is the backdrop for the Cambrian explosion, a period when more than half of all animal phyla, everything from arthropods to early chordates, appear in the fossil record within just 20 million years. That's not just fast. In evolutionary terms, it's a detonation. The Dushantuo Formation in China holds the microscopic fossils that help tell this story. Some are clusters of cells frozen at the earlier stages of division, possible animal embryos from over 600 million years ago. Their discovery, after years of CT scanning and lab races, rewrote textbooks and pushed the roots of animal life deeper into the E. diacaron. These fossils don't look like much, just tiny beads and spheres but they're evidence that complex development was already underway while the world was still thawing out. Scientists have floated wild theories for how this burst of diversity happened. With the ozone layer battered after snowball Earth, UV radiation may have flooded the surface, ramping up mutation rates. More likely, it was the ecological release, the sudden absence of competition and the flood of nutrients from weathered rock that let survivors evolve in every possible direction. The oceans, newly oxygenated, became a playground for experiment. The result, the greatest diversification event in animal history, all sparked by a catastrophe that nearly erased life itself. More than 50% of all known animal phyla first appear in rocks dating to the Cambrian explosion, just after Earth thawed from its most extreme ice age. Geological records from Namibia, China and Canada confirm that 700 million years ago, glaciers reached the equator and global temperatures averaged around minus 50 degrees Celsius. Yet life survived in hidden refuges, hydrothermal vents, brine pockets and under thick ice. 
until a surge of volcanic carbon dioxide triggered a rapid deglaciation. While evidence from cap carbonates and fossil embryos illuminates how life rebounded, scientists still debate the exact mechanisms linking Snowball Earth's end to the burst of biodiversity that followed. The full story of how catastrophe sparked such creative evolution is not yet complete, but the evidence is clear. Even at the planet's coldest, life persisted, setting the stage for all complex organisms today. Earth's greatest freeze remains one of its most profound turning points.